everyone, and welcome into All World Gaming's Rainbow Six League. This is AWG for short. That's what we'll be referring to it. And uh, this is going to be game number six. This is the first season, so we're just getting everything started. And it's going to be a matchup between General Electric and Imperial. I am We All Coo. I am joined here with fellow, my friend John here. And uh, we're going to be the casters, and we're going to be on Oregon. Any ideas of how this might play out, John? Very defender favorited. Oregon, it's referred to as Borgen, most people. Very resident sleeper. Not many people like this, so maybe General Electric will get a lot of early on round leads because a lot of sites, very difficult to actually defend properly, or pardon, attack properly, my mistake. So I think the bands will definitely describe that quite well. Most likely going to see a Thatcher, maybe another Harbreacher or a Maverick as well, but a Thatcher is most certainly a definite. And there goes the Maverick first. Okay, then. Interesting. We'll see then, is Imperia going to keep the Thatcher on the board for themselves, or will they do the standard meta of banning away the Thatcher? I wouldn't be surprised uh, if they did do that. Um, but if they don't, I'm curious to see what is going to come out, and it will be that Thatcher. Okay. okay, so about what we expected. What about defense here, John? Amira, most likely, and then possibly a Kaid. That way you can actually get the hatches open when it comes to attacking the basement site of Laundry and Supply. That way you can get better control of E-Box or Electrical, as most people like to call it. I bet General Electric would like to defend that part of the map quite well. Haha, <laughs> very funny joke. I know I'm incredibly hilarious, Wes. But the Mira, that'll get banned first. So there might be a little bit of room for variety. Maybe that Kaid that I was referring to, or something different possibly, a Wamai can get banned quite often. In Oregon or anything along that general area. Maybe even Malusi possibly as well. Yeah, I was thinking Malusi is another alternative, and okay. it will be the Malusi. Um, but I do think, personal opinion, Cade is probably the one to ban here because then you know everything has to be on the floor. And if they're upstairs holding that defense, you know they have to put either bandit charges or those mute chambers on the floor. You can destruct both the closet wall and the attic wall from below. So that would really help them out. And you already mentioned the benefit of having easy access to opening up those hatches. That's not the case now. So this is very, very defender sided. No Maverick or Thatcher and Kate is still on the board. I, I think this will play out just like you had said before. Well, right now, General Electric has not picked a Kaid, so this could be a huge problem for the defensive hold. Instead, they're opting for the very unorthodox pick of Capcan. Maybe they'll six pick off onto it. Maybe it's just a surprise pick, and then they'll just go right off of it. But I haven't seen a single six pick yet, except by VIP, and it'll be onto the IQ. A very good pick, especially since it's very difficult to get a lot of stop destruction off on this site, but... I mean, Attackers need to it's mostly just to spot. help with the cap can most likely as a counteract because she does hard counter him quite well. It removes that element of surprise, but there isn't really, there's nothing for the wall denial. So Ace's yeah. job <laughs> on the ace, it's going to be very easy to say the least. This could be a very attacker favorite at first round, Wes. That's what I was thinking looking at the lineup of that defense. Nothing to deny the walls getting opened up. The only problem, though, I would say is these attackers only bring one hard breach. So if that hard breach dies, that's a problem. The other thing is Ace isn't very great for the hatches. So if they just reinforce them, they're going to be very limited in where they can do that hard breach. I would agree. I feel like both of these team comps are very lackluster. There isn't a lot of utility when it comes to extending out into Blue Bunker. And with the most recent changes to both Jaeger and Momai and a lot of other utility heavy operators, you have to fully commit if you're going to extend on out in a Blue Bunker. And that is not what we're seeing by General Electric. So like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to just double down on my previous take. This is a very lackluster team composition on both sides. For the most part, Wes, it's probably going to gum, or come down to just fragging potential, if anything, and not so much how well the utility dump can come to effect. And so far, Bad Bunny, he's just waltzing right on down into laundry sterile he's already at the very bottom he might just run right into the bomb site and just try to go for any possible frags uh, to say the least that's probably what's going to happen only problem i see with this is he could get the frag but he also has no refrag potential there's no one playing with him here so that's a little bit concerning they're also going to waste a summon charge on the hatch which is not a very good hatch to open it's just the laundry hatch it's not even directly above site that's going to be bad bunny getting that first opening kill onto unfair these defenders already having someone off the board that's the jaeger gone so that does help these attackers but a refrag might come here bad bunny is downed and finished off by the smoke great refrag by zurgis finishing him off with the bad or the toxic bay my mistake and breeze from behind will pick up two incredible frags now a 2k for him 
Quack finds one as well, but not a center will shut him down before he finds second of his own. That's Carrier now down in the middle of Freezer, all up to a 1v3, up to not a center. He'll trade with Zerges, and that will give General Electric the first round win on Oregon. And I was pretty correct on my take. It's going to be a mostly frag-centric matchup because both of these lineups really do not mix well against one another at all. This is very uncommon for a game of Oregon where you see a lot of utility favorited operators. That's not really going to be the case, but maybe when approaching kids in dorms, it will be a little bit different this time. Yeah, I guess they weren't very phased by not having any denial for the breaches because they just played a very aggressive defense. Now here they do have the bandit on the board, at least as of yet, unless they six pick off of it. These attackers, they got caught unawares. They had a flank on them, even though they had net nomad, I think in the lineup before anyways. I don't know for sure on that. I think they did. Uh, but this case, they're going to need to be more on point, even if they weren't last time. That's maybe why the, the pick came out on Nomad by Eddie. So I would like to see that put in great places of, of potential for that flank coming out from these attackers. But I'm not a huge fan of the IQ a lot of the time, just because there's not all that many players that are destructible. Up here on the top side, I guess it makes more sense, but especially basically you can't do much with them. Um, so I would actually have liked to see them stick with the Sophia. That way they can clear more utility and, and uh, work in tandem with that uh, Ash. To be honest, Wes, it's probably just for the cap can, but you can just find them with your faces or a drone, perhaps. You don't really need to specifically pick one operator to try and counteract another op who's already very useless. I mean, Breeze's EDs did literally nothing. He just won two separate gunfights, and again, he's going to get quite aggressive going for that spawn peak, but he'll back off almost immediately, now retreating up above in towards Laundry or part of Armory stairwell, and now we'll be sitting quite comfortably behind the main lobby doorway, but finally he will commit to the retreat, so still a five-on-five, five, not a lot of action going on just yet, but... Still not really a big fan of either two of these lineups, a little bit more favorable towards Imperia, but speaking of them, they'll actually lose the first gunfight. Bad Bunny will get eliminated by Quack. It'll be an injure, though, by the Dead Ash, but he will not get picked up in the process. He's so far away. Essentially now a 4v3. Imperia will technically have a slight advantage after that frag grenade will finish off Cap Cannon. Yeah, so two men down, one was helped up, the other one was finished off by a frag grenade, but that leaves two of these defenders on very little HP, and the rest of these attackers full HP. Now, I will point out with the IQ, they also could be countering Quack on that uh, Valkyrie. They did bring it both times now, so trying to find those Valk cams can be important, but at the same time, there's only so many places those can be, and a lot of the times they are pretty visible. We're going to see some pinks come out just showing where those Capkins are going to be, which is always a good reminder. I know a lot of people, if it's late in the round, you're rushing, you will run into those, so it's really important, but Marlo going to get a kill on to Eddie. That's a nice C4 coming out, and even though they have a deficit in health, they do now have the man advantage. Still able to deny this push coming out from closet side pretty effectively. Wasting a decent amount of time in the process. We are down to that last half a minute into the round. Unfair going in for a very aggressive wide swing. It'll pay off perfectly as he shuts down A's. That's now the diffuser stuck inside of closet, but not a sinner will trade things out almost immediately. A minute 10 now on the clock and Imperius still have a chance to win this, but they have to pick up that diffuser and go around to try to get this plant down. Zerges will deny it though for a little while longer with that toxic babe. It'll waste about 10 seconds on the clock and he has two more left in his back pocket. This could stall a a lot of crucial time for Imperia. This could maybe lead to another round win for General Electric. They just have to play their cards right. And so far, they are playing passively enough where they are not going to give themselves away as they are all incredibly low on HP, except for Marlu, who is still on 100 health. And that was an air jab below, giving away the position of one of those defenders, trying to flank up, and now they're going to have to rotate out. Now, there's still a cap can trap, and I was going to mention it, but they didn't manage to okay. see it, which is good for them. But I was worried, though. Uh, I was still there in play until the end. Now, not a is going to try and go up with white, but there's a person playing here. He does get the kill, though. That's Marlu off the board. Now they're going to have to find two more. Viper is going to find one, and now the last one as well on the quack. What a good job from Viper to seal that and get a win for the attackers, even though it didn't look like they really had the advantage there. I I don't know why they just allowed Viper just to walk right in through front door, but okay. Great comeback round by Imperia at the very least, but leaving things up one-to-one. -one. And we might see a return of Kiss of Dorms. Yep, almost instantly picked. That makes a lot of sense. 
I would have personally opted to go maybe kids and dining, or not kids and dining, sorry, dining and kitchen, maybe to catch Imperia off guard. But now they're very well aware of how exactly you're going to want to defend this bomb site because you literally just went there a round ago. And the only difference on this team composition is now we have both the SAS operators of Mute and Smoke on the board instead of just the Smoke. But even then, that's really not going to do a lot as there actually wasn't a lot of drone game on the side of Imperia. Right. Now, there's a couple things I want to point out. For one, that also takes away the Valk. So now they're out cameras. So hopefully there's a bulletproof being brought, but I look and there's none. I'm really questioning this cap camp pick. It doesn't seem to be netting them a whole lot. Uh, I would definitely have brought a Valk instead of that versus uh, switching away from the Valk onto something else that could have kept them in the lineup. The other thing I want to point out, though, I don't know if you noticed this, John, but that smoke last time did not place that shield. They had it in their pocket that entire round. So it's like, what are you doing? That really could have actually saved them in that round. That, that left, that could have blocked an angle for Viper with, in the dying seconds, did get those last two kills. Could have been a completely different round had they just placed that shield down in a key position looking towards that doorway. You could have had it in the doorway. You could have had it next to the half wall, perhaps, looking down the long angle towards that deer doorway, but like you said, kept it in his back pocket. I did, in fact, notice that. And it was very upsetting because deployable shields, other than the C4, they're probably one of the best secondary utilities that you can bring on any operator because how much map control it can deny because you can see through them and just play it like a mobile Mira. And we didn't even get to see that on the side of General Electric. It was a really huge mistake. And it, it is slightly upsetting. Let's hope they can redeem themselves on this third round. But... I'm honestly not too sure. It's kind of a wild gamble as of right now. It's only the first half a minute down the drain, so anything can really happen. Still a five on five, and it's a very slow start for Imperia. They're trying to work their way towards the closet side of the map, maybe get that back wall opened up. Nice C4, I believe that was, or impact raid. Couldn't really tell, to be honest, or it was an EDD, actually. My mistake, forgot Capcom was on the board, and now Eddie is on about 50 HP. Has to play a little bit more reclusively if he does not want to lose his life too early in the round and waste all of his three air jets that he still has in his back pocket. Yeah, I don't know how you hit that. I'm sorry to say it, but like they've been running yeah. Kepkin every round. Like, get, just throw the drone work. They're not even denying the drones. The mute is going to be placed on the site, right? And so, with that in mind, there's nothing here being extended out with those mute jammers. So, being hit down below for one is just not really acceptable at this level. So, hopefully, they can clean that up. At this case, though, no one did die. They're going to be trying to throw a nade into Attic here. And if there's no ADS there, they could be caught unawares. And there is going to be a grenade thrown not catching anything marlu was pretty lucky there honestly didn't even get the jump up onto that uh extended higher ground you could say and in this case nothing being netted now there's going to be zergus getting a kill on the bad bunny that's going to be the ash off the board these defenders keep on getting these kills and eddie off the board as well by breeze so they have the two-man advantage but we saw them with an advantage last time and they still lost that round Imperia essentially just funneling into General Electric's gun sights. Ace will pick up a refrag on Azurgis, and Vip will follow suit, evening things up now three on three. But General Electric, they're still in a great spot to win this. They just have to deny the two choke points of that closet wall and the deer doorway. And they're doing a fantastic job. Breeze swings around, shuts down another. A 2K for the Capcam player, and they just have to find two more. Wide swing comes around, not going to land any shots just yet, but he still has plenty of health to deny aces from pushing in through that main wall and getting that plant down now down to 20 seconds still looking great for general electric this is going to be most likely a funnel push coming out from imperia in a last ditch ever to wind out the third round and so far it's not working whatsoever edd blows up in the face of vip and that's going to allow marlo to get an easy frag now a 1v3 and ace is basically just trying to go for the kill bait he picks up one onto unfair but a refrag comes out quickly on the marlo and it will be another round win favoring general electric and they do in fact redeem themselves from their past mistakes Thanks. Yeah, really good job. They're very aggressive. That's one thing I can say right off the bat each round. And the other thing I've noticed, John, they've been getting that opening kill, I'm pretty sure, every single round so far. So that's really good for their stats going into this next round. Shows that they have maintaining an advantage. Even that round they lost, I think they actually got the opening kill again with that jump up by the Valk. And so we have to be wary. I think these uh, attackers just not used to that aggression, so they're going to have to be very cautious. And they are also running into these Capcan traps, which I think is very avoidable. So hopefully we can see the attack just clean up a couple things. I think they could find themselves in a better position. I think the term you're looking for is just drone forehead. 
Uh, <laughs> that's a good one. At least one way you can deny the EDDs. I mean, Cap can as a whole, on paper, he sounds really good. Oh my god, these traps that literally just blow up and get you free damage, basically, if these teams don't look around for Cap cans. I mean, yeah, sure. That's going to work in ranked, for example, and maybe really low T4. But if you're looking to improve yourself as a competitive team, you should stop bringing the cap can. Another operator that I should mention, too, is the dock. I'm going to be honest, Wes. General Electric's team comp literally looks like a ranked team comp. The only two viable ops I would even consider mentioning is the Smoke and Jaeger. I mean, Legion's okay, but... Considering all things, you should probably be bringing someone like a Malusi or a Goyo yeah, on your defensive hold, especially when you're extending on out into basement. And there's no deployable shield, Wes. This is a very, um, it's a very oddball hold this is some by General Electric. Stuff. If it, yeah, if Imperia notices the massive amount of holes in the defensive lineup by General Electric, they could take away this round pretty easily and even things up again two to two. I was literally just thinking this. Like, if they can recognize what's going on with this defense, they can just rush in. They can open up angles with this hard boost they have with Ace. And they have the gun power. They have the F2. They have the AK. They have Sledge's gun, which I'm just blanking on right now, which is a decent gun. But they even have the R4C, right? So those are really good high frag potential guns. And even the gun in the No Man's Hand, I actually prefer the AK myself, but that's all preference-based. Yeah. Um but either way, it's not a bad gun. They have no bad guns on their team. Versus on the other side, uh, Smoke's probably running a shotgun SMG-11. It's not the greatest thing in the world. A dock, yeah, he can stem himself, but the MP5 is only a good for headshots. So you can really shut down these defenders easily. And notice the roam game here. They could easily just push onto site and get a plant. There's nothing to stop them. Breeze is completely uncontested. He can rotate around in towards Attic. A wall bang almost lands, but Bad Bunny will find the opening frag on the Quack. And there goes all your active utility on the dock. If that was on a different operator, it could have been a completely different story. Luckily, though, Marlo will pick up the trade on the Bad Bunny. Breeze following suit right after Eddie found a kill, but Vip from around the corner will land the headshot on the Breeze. Now in a two on two as he whiffs all of his shots on the unfair. And this will bring things down to an even man count once again. But there's still a minute 30 on the clock, Wes. We just saw 20 seconds of action-packed kills coming out left and right, and now it's going to be a very sluggish start as now Ace and not a sinner will attempt to try to force Zerge's hand to get himself out of Blue Bunker, but there's far too much utility on the defensive side. But what? Oh my goodness. Why are you leaving that? You could just use your toxic babes. What? Ace can oh. just open that too. It's the other thing. I and... What I was really concerned about here, John, sorry to interrupt, but they oh, okay. they could have rushed. They knew Jaeger is up. It's a 2v2. You can just push on this man. Or smoke off that hallway and just push into sight through pillars. Like, you had so many options. If you just acted quickly, they wasted it. Now both of those defenders are back on sight, and they're lower on time now. I would have much rather have had Zerges hold down the fort, use his toxic babes, but this is still a pretty decent position because he has all three of his gas canisters left to use, so he can deny the push from both E-Box and also the main wall. He's using his gadgets a little too late, as there's already one player in the middle of sight, and second toxic babe comes out as well. Luckily, though, Unfair will make up for that as he picks up one. A trade comes out again as Aces lands the headshot onto Unfair across the ways. Now in a 1v1, Zerg can deny the plant with his last toxic babe, but he doesn't know. He'll detonate it far too early. Aces can get away scot-free. He's got to leave that smoke, though, and no! Not enough time to leave, and that's going to give smoke just enough time to defuse. Zerges will clutch the round in a 1v1. He types lol in chat, and <laughs> oh, no. again... I wouldn't consider that a great round for General Electric. Defender I would just say that Imperia made way more mistakes compared to the defensive lineup. You have to act on information. And I'm sorry to be like so critical right. here. Like, but we're just trying to be constructive criticism here. So hopefully they'll like watch back and listen to what we're saying here. Cause there's definitely things that we've seen at higher levels that, that would not allow these things to continue. One thing you want to do, if you're in a 2v2, you know someone's roaming off site you push site, even if there's one there, you have the refract potential. And then even if it's a 1v1, the last person's not on site. So you can get that plant down. So it's just the situational awareness was not there for Imperia. They waited too long. And then they let the smoke even get out of that position. They could have pushed on. The ace could have been a little bit faster, just opening up the wall as they were even just reinforcing it. Just throw it on there, man. And then your teammate could have tried to push around. And then my main question here, where's the drone work? Like they were just able to flank right on top of stairs. Nomad looking down on pillar from the uh, tower stairs there, nothing was protecting them 
apparently. Like, that's just a little concerning. Yeah, you have nomads, but this is what I really don't like about nomads. It makes teams complacent. I've seen it so many times. You just rely on it too much. You need flank drones still. Yeah, I mean, that's why a lot of people would consider Zero a good pickup, because you can use a lot of his, or cameras, yeah, you can use a lot of his cameras to actually just be flank drones. The only problem is that someone's going to have to be dead to watch those consistently, but that's okay. It happens sometimes. It's still a great option to think about, and not just hard picking the Nomad, because like you said, complacency is a big issue in a lot of upcoming competitive teams, but... Now heading to meeting and kitchen, a decent lineup, much better than what we've seen before. For once, Wes, there's no cap can. Breeze is often to go that Oryx pick. And to be honest, for a site like meeting and kitchen, it's actually not that bad of a pick. And he'll get quite aggressive going for a spawn peak. He's not going to land any shots. But on the bright side, the exact same situation happens by Imperia. And they will not mark it off of a huge mistake by Breeze. That'll keep things a five on five. And now Imperia has to worry about that top roamer of Oryx throughout the entire round, but on the bright side, they'll pick up one in compensation onto Unfair. Yeah, they get the opening kill last time, though, and they still lost the round. Now, I think that was still winnable round, for sure, but they kind of didn't act on the information, as I had said. Um, but in this case, they have the opening kill early. It's not even a minute in. They still have everyone alive. Now, the main concern will be that Oryx, though. That Oryx has so much potential, especially on this bomb site. You want to get verticality normally here on this bomb site, and then on top of it, you're going to have to watch out for all these flanks. Now, the Oryx can jump up through hatches and do many other things, so he's a very dangerous character you have to watch out for. Ooh, Bad Bunny low on health as well. He's going to be just face-checking everything. I mean... We talked about drone economy earlier, Wes. He still has a drone in his back pocket, and then not droning out this Oryx player will force a lot of damage on the side of not a center. But luckily, Bad Bunny will manage to take the spot of Sledge and manage to pick up that frag of five on three now. Imperia has a decent chance of winning out this round. They're up by two players, but again, they're face checking everything. And because they're so low in HP, eventually they'll end up dying, and that's exactly what happens around the stair will pick up one on the bad bunny that will begin to slow things down on the push for imperia a minute 20 on the clock though anything can still happen but now imperia has to be a little bit smarter about this push and they're doing just that the vertical play it may waste a lot of time but it cuts off so many sightlines against general electric this is a much better situation for them and they still have a minute to work with and they still have hard breach, so if they need to get in into a certain yeah. position, they can certainly use it. The other thing I want to mention, though, they didn't really need Ash to be base peeking the, the flank. They could have been using drone. She had a drone in her pocket, it looks like, or it was on the field and still in play it somewhere. So having someone on that cam, they didn't have to watch it with their own face. As I said, they could have had it there active and then got off of it and known that they were pushing on them. Viper, though, going to get killed on the Quack. That's going to put them in a two-man advantage now. They even see on the cam where another one of those defenders are playing. Only one left unknown. They know that they can start pushing site now off to the west side as there's no defenders playing in this position. Half a minute on the clock as well. Only two defenders alive. A plant could come down. Aces will do just that. Smoke's covering it as well, along with the manpower. Eddie picks up one on the Zerges. Now a 1v4. It's all up to the roaming player of Marlu, stuck in Z wall. He's not going to find one kill. He'll get lit up in the process through that hallway slash corridor. And now he has to basically win an impossible round. No intel to work with and eddie around the corner will return the favor on to the legion player as well now an ov4 and we're going to see a comeback round win favoring imperia but there is still a one round lead favoring general electra yeah well they got the early man advantage getting that roaming jaeger um and so that did allow them to continue success throughout that round but so far if general electric does win this that was the offsite too so that's the site you'd expect the attackers to win if general electric can win like what we kind of expect if we're going by standard meta, that would be that classic 4-2 split. So we're pretty much sitting in a position that is standard. So I wouldn't be sweating it too much. Now on Imperial side, they really do want this round still because then they can go into that 3-3 split and then they're going to be on defense, which is still, in my opinion, favored. The reason I think General Electric hasn't won four already within these first few rounds is simply that lack of coordination with the team comp they didn't have everything that you would standardly need sometimes they forego cameras sometimes they're foregoing that hard breach denial and i think that has kind of played to those attackers being able to get two rounds already yeah i think team comp as well another huge thing we're seeing no drone work whatsoever except for in the prep phase and 
they just lose their drones because they're just having them set up directly in the middle of sight, just asking to be shot by someone on the side of General Electric. One thing that they could change, get rid of Sledge, because this is probably one of his worst maps to be played on because of the laundry site that has no vertical destruction at all, and also this top floor of kids and dormitory, because that's a difficult site for him as well. Bring the Yana. She still has grenades. You can use her gadget. It's literally a human drone. You can drone players like Bad Bunny in so he can find frags much easier. I mean, it's just a lack of actually decent team comps that we're seeing, Wes, and that's basically why Imperia is collapsing because it's a defender side of the matchup and they're not really bringing a lot of incredible ops. They're just bringing a couple of niche picks here and there that aren't really bringing that much to the team overall. Yeah, it's kind of funny that you mentioned Yana because I was literally just thinking the exact same thing. Now, they're going to have some Valk camps being thrown out, but it's not going to be played off of, and that's the only risk you run if you run a, if you throw a camp outside, and especially in a position so easily seen like that. It's like, if you can't act on that information, it's literally a waste of one of those cameras, which could prove pivotal in the later rounds when they're trying to plant. For example, you have the eyes in sight, let's say. Uh, that That's why you don't want to risk that kind of camping thrown out exactly what we just saw now the other thing i did want to give credit for with the drone work that you had mentioned they did have some good active droning on attack last round specifically and so we saw it distract i believe it was the oryx above and so while he was shooting that drone a kill was found so i think instead of necessarily active droning that passive droning just not leaving it in bad positions having the cams in the right spots without even needing to move them that's what i'd like to see the improvement come and the mute's definitely denying a lot of drone potential, but you can always just break them with your soft destruction. But Breeze is going to break the soul of Eddie. He finds the opening pick is now a minute 30 is on the clock. And what a dirty play by Quack. He will not get punished at all, but Bad Bunny will punish Breeze, making things a three on three now. Viper picks up the headshot onto one fair. Luckily, though, Zerge is around the corner all the way down the hall, shotting down through Deer Doorway will pick up another making things again back in the favor of General Electric. And at the moment, they can't get that closet wall open. Finally, though, Bad Bunny from underneath will break a singular bandit charge that can allow for those Selmas to detonate. And that can give two different ways of approach on that eastern side. And there is always, of course, that wild card play of maybe walking up towards White Stairwell. But at the moment, I think for the most part, Imperia is just waiting around towards the back area. One player inside a master that's aces with the Selmas being activated. And then Ash outside, a little undecisive, but she'll walk around heading up towards the side of Armory. Aces will find the head to own the Quack. That'll even things up now in these last 30 seconds. This is a decent spot for Imperia, but they have to gather this intel on the last two players because they're not entirely sure where they could be positioned at, and that is exactly what Aces is doing. He'll spot one in the back near Addict. This could give them a lot of intel to work with. He knows it'll be a very tricky task for him to walk around towards that wall, but he'll do it regardless. Marlon will mark it off of that mistake. A 1v2 now. It's up to Bad Buddy coming up through White Stairwell, and Zerges around the corner will find his second kill for the round, and General Electric will make this a four-on-two split, and we will possibly see a pause for a little while. Yeah, one thing I want to say on that round is like it was in the defender's favor. So this is just a small criticism on the attack. They probably had a harder chance of winning, right? That makes sense. But you're in a 2v2. You notice the wall and closet was soft or not electrocuted, excuse me. So they were able to open that up. The one thing I didn't like is you still had smokes in your pocket and you didn't even attempt to use those to cover uh, your entry through that or even go switch over to the doorway where you know they're playing in that attic area. Now, the other thing they could have done is they still had two aces in their pocket. What harm does it do to open up the line of sight into attic, try and push them away or into a corner and have your other person watching the doorway? You can really clear out attic there, force them to go back into the kid's bedroom. But in this case, they didn't open up that line of sight. So the defenders didn't have to worry. They only had to watch that breach in that doorway. Yeah, it's very worrisome, to say the least, that... General Electric has been making a lot of minute mistakes. On paper, they don't sound really that bad, but when you actually get into higher competition, like decent T3 leagues, like general T2, if that ever happens, you're not going to be able to get away with this kind of stuff. It's very obvious. So a lot of lessons to be learned from this game. Even if General Electric wins this, I would probably recommend they would still go into this VOD, listen to our commentary, because we are giving a lot of really good points. I mean... There's a reason why we cast. It's because we know a decent amount about the game. But 4-2 to two split, 
really common. I like the lineup by Imperia and also the setup on the side of General Electric, to be fair with you, Wes. It really seems like we've seen a complete and utter difference in both team comps. That Jackal could be great for a roam clear, but sadly, I don't think we're going to see a lot of roaming. This looks to be more of a five-man anchor setup based on what I'm seeing on the side of Imperia. No, it looks like both teams might be ready to go here, if I'm seeing correctly. So should be able to resume here. The other thing I want to point out is just to build off your point is I like both lineups as well. One thing that they're bringing on attack is Jackal, extra smokes. On top of it, they have been roaming heavily on the other side. You'd probably expect to see a heavy roam game here, at least one or two roamers. That's pretty standard on Oregon, just to slow more time, kill more time for your defense. Now, the other thing that they aren't bringing that I can explain is they don't have cams, right? But the reason is you have that Goyle and Smoke bringing three different shields then on top of it the wamai and the jaeger to protect those shields that's going to give you a lot of lines of sight you don't really need cameras if you have those shields Defender placed properly so i do like the lineup on both sides as you had mentioned this is a very um normal setup from what we saw last season this is technically the quote-unquote 20 second meta defense but We've seen a transition away from that kind of meta team comp from two seasons ago or three seasons now, I believe. Uh, it was kind of pushing away, turned more to a 30, 40 second meta from last season. And now we're actually seeing a lot more Mute and Mozzie roam extensions coming out. A Rooney's being played because her utility wastes so much time and the attacker's utility as well. So. This is a very old school team comp, but a lot of very low league teams might not be prepared for this much amount of info or part of that information, but utility dump. But I think General Electric still is a fighting chance. They have that double self destruction, a lot of smoke grenades, like you mentioned, two separate pairs, and a couple grenades. So they have a lot of throwables to work with, but it's the timing as well. ADSs, they're now infinite. So you could, the, the sky's the limit, basically. And Breeze, a nice opening pick on the Bad Bunny. There goes your main roamer, Jackal, not even and having to do a scratch of work surprised that they had breeze on the entry which is very uh worrisome but that's okay and now the security has to be open the background this might be a free decide to take us which could catch imperial off guard tremendous yeah but this is the problem i see is now you only have one ace charge left we're gonna see quack take some damage though they're gonna try and trade some back but unfair gonna take some damage as well and so a lot of these attackers are getting lower on their hp they're still relatively healthy but only a couple bullets they'll be down and that will be one of them that's not a center getting breeze off the board bring it back to the even man count trying to peek and find more in freezer but not catching anything we're gonna see zerg is gonna get killed on to ace though and that is going to bring it to the attacker's favor yet again and another one on to not a center what a nice shot now they have a 4v2 man advantage these defenders not knowing what's happening eddie's gonna be down marlo's gonna be downed in return though and now we're gonna see viper get killed and on top of it eddie will follow nice quick and easy 3k for zerges that's gonna give another round win favoring General Electric, that was a very surprising round outcome. I really thought Imperia had that in the bag, but they were just caught off guard by the amount of aggression that General Electric showed. That was surprising, to say the least. I'm very baffled about that. And now it's going to be a return to laundry room and supply and a very different lineup. There's no Goyo instead of Mutes on the board. I guess that's to help with the hard destruction perhaps that's the only purpose i could see mute being brought on the board for because we saw zero drone work by general electric they just face checked everything and they won their gunfights that simplistically and now they're running a much more aggressive lineup in that process to better fit what's comfortable for them the only real non-aggressive player is the habana now being traded for a nomad for flank denial instead of hard destruction which i think is a bit of a mistake but it's all right as long as you just win your gunfights i suppose and I do want to point out they still have the hard breach on Zergus on the Capitel, so they can still get that hatch that they like to get in Freezer, but the problem is that's the only hard breach they have, so what are they going to do? Where are the lines of sight going to open up for them? They're really limiting their options here, so I do agree with you. That isn't the best decision. Now, maybe they can work around it, right? The problem with this Imperia team in general, I'm just going to throw it out there, against General Electric specifically, is they just don't seem to be able to handle the aggression that we've seen come out from General Electric. They've been aggressive on defense. We just saw them push sight heavily, very fast. Not what you would expect. Most teams will try and clear the utility that they had brought. They didn't. They just went for those frags, and they got them. So Imperia is going to have to figure out something with that aggression. They're going to have to find ways to counter that. I mean, they're like the X set of T4. They are just playing super aggressive and 
unlike Xset, it's actually working out. They're playing like a ranked, and they're not going up against pro league players, so they're getting away with it scot-free. I mean, it, it does make a lot of sense when you think about it. And again, getting away with it scot-free, Marlow, an impressive opening frag onto Viper. That's so much ag utility, and because of that, they're already flushing out the player in the back near elbow. I think Marlow just wasted every single Candela except for one, but at least it'll still flush out the player near elbow while he'll be denied for a second longer. That toxic babe will thwart Marlow's chances of getting into the bomb site directly, but a five on four still. General Electric have the upper hand, and it's only a matter of time before they flush out the player inside a pillar and oh no oh, no that's not what you want to see wes yeah tk coming up by the capital ball not a center can kill on and marlu and wow this attack actually looked like it had a chance and now just because of that it's all falling away from them 2v4 now glass on the board with the nomad that's not the two you probably want in this situation nomad has very small ammo because of the gun they chose to go with and glass of course just a sniper rifle on ace is just going to kill them so quack off the board and now you're left with breeze on that nomad this is probably going to be a win for imperia and it is bad bunny shuts them down they're going to find themselves a little bit closer at a five three now not a five two Okay, that's how Exit normally plays. That actually makes much more sense. I'm glad my analogy <laughs> was true, so that that makes me feel good. I don't know if Electric General is going to feel good about that, but hey, great round win by Imperia. They really, uh, they forced down that win through the throats of General Electric. I mean, they basically just countered all of the huge mistakes that General Electric had. Just a very, again, rank style team comp that normally will fall flat on its face when you're playing in any bit of competitive just because of the communication factor and a lot of teamwork some teams have a lot of really good chemistry personally so it does make sense that imperia really had a no no troubles winning out that round it'll be five on three still favoring general electric but now we're heading in towards kids and dorms which is attacked a completely different way compared to laundry so this could give general electric a lot of troubles moving forward this is looking like a really heavy utility mind game at this point because you have the Wamai and Jaeger trying to protect the shield of the smoke and then the Maestro cams. But on the other side of things, you have all these smokes to burn away those Wamais and all of that utility. You have the Capital bolts as well. And then, of course, the breaching charges brought by both the Ash and the Sophia. And then on top of it, the Ying charges. So there's so much utility, so many throwables, shootables, whatever, depending on the op. And I'm curious to see how it plays out because if they can keep those Maestro cams on the board, it looks like they're really heavily relying on a smoke plant. They have the glass, the Capital Bolts, which have smoke, and then the Ying. So I feel like they're just going to kind of try and rush, probably go through that double window and try and just do a smoke plant while the glass covers. But if those Maestro cams, again, can stay on the board, they can see through that smoke and it could really be the greatest counter. I'm glad you noticed that too. I was going to actually tell you a little story to waste some time. Casted T4 EU League a long or a while ago, a couple months back now, and this is exactly what happened. The lineup was almost the exact same. Ying Candela's soaring through the sky as they went in through Big Window, one player near kids. This is literally verbatim the exact same thing I witnessed, except Imperium finds a refrag. I did not witness that. It was probably more or less a four on three, but oh my, my god. god. What an amazing shot by Sinner. Bye bye to Breeze. There goes your kids window player. And this attack could come collapsing because of that. They're down two players and they still have the smokes and the Yen Candelas. They'll still attempt for the plant. Glass is planting though. This is the exact opposite of who you want to have planting, but it could still work out. They're not possibly. stopping There's it. There's no denial on the planet. What is going on in <laughs> You have to deny the plant with some things. And now General Electric have a fighting chance. What was Smoke doing here? I'm sorry. He has two babes in his pocket. They don't even realize what's going on. Did they fully reinforce that wall on the kids as well? Like, there's no lines of sight. In... Oh, my goodness. It's over. Yeah, Glass is just going to slap them. That quack gets a bad bunny. This is looking really dire for these defenders. They're not going to really be able to do anything, as you were saying. They're just going to be covered. The Smoke won't cover this line of sight from that Glass, so... Time's already ticking away. This is already a done deal. Glad's just going to pick up more bodies for his kill count. That's one. Viper will get an exchange, but Unfair going to actually catch the kill for themselves, denying the Glass more kills. And uh, these defenders are going to lose a round on the back of just not watching that window carefully. I think you get to see the other team's lineup. There's a six pick, but that's only one player they can switch away from. You should have known what they were planning just looking at that lineup. They already had decent enough counters to that. I mean, they could have brought a warden to try to contest Glaz. I feel like Glaz would have won that fight. But anyways, just 
having something, a C4 underneath prepped, a, a pulse, for example, a sound cues. I mean, my God, candelas are one of the loudest gadgets in the game. So are smoke grenades. You can't hear the sound cue. I, I cannot fathom that. And they already had the other two players dead that were approaching from different directions. They just had to worry about the push from big window and they still lost. And now because of that, General Electric is one round away from winning the best of one. It is only one map. So because of that, if General Electric takes this, we're not going to see anything else. Imperial will just flat out lose. And that is, my God, that is just upsetting. That, that's depressing, to, to be honest. Okay, it is. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. In and Ace, look where he's putting it. He put a Maestro cam here last time. Uh, was it not looking at the window? I know Maestro I died know. right off the bat, but at least if it's looking in the right direction, he can still feed that information. We see him turning it right now so he can see over there. But like last time, maybe he just didn't do that. And it was kind of sad because Maestro was the first person to die in the whole round. So uh, did deny them some opportunities to deny it. But you still have C4s, you still have smoke babes on the board. I'm just so baffled that they would just not be ready for it and in this case now uh it looks like they're gonna maybe try the same thing but what i think this is is a distraction because i see an amaru i see amaru either going through a window just jumping in getting kills or they might try that sneaky hatch in the kids dorms and they could just go up and then these defenders if they're not careful it's gonna catch them off guard i want to know what window or hatch he's gonna hop in through that's probably the only thing i'm questioning because that's the only reason you bring Amaru, like you mentioned. I mean, yeah, you're pretty accurate on that. It's going to be through the kitchen hallway one, and oh, to the, the hatch. Uh, I knew right it. right about the hatch. <laughs> oh, he's getting ready. He's all walking up there. This is going to be a very interesting approach. That hatch instantly going to break. It'll give away someone. He almost hops down the hatch and three, oh, no. <laughs> blue, three BQK for Viper. This actually might be a winnable round for Imperia. They just have to deny the plant. Smokes come out. Aces and Viper can deny this. Both of their gadgets can see through the smokes. C4 tossed out. It's going to be a complete waste, but still, at least Viper is alive and kicking in order to deny this plant. Two minutes still remain on the clock. This could really go either way. I could completely see Imperia throwing this round uh, even more so, as it's now a five on two. This is still slightly winnable, though, but it's going to be very difficult indeed for General Electric. Well, it looks like they at least learned from last round. Like, they're not getting caught off guard this time. Now, <laughs> one thing I do want to say is this this could have worked. But, again, where's the drone work? They're just, like, playing like monkeys. I'm just going to say it. They definitely are. Uh, Ace is just going to get the kill to Marla, who was just not looking at him, apparently. Now, Zergus is the last one around alive. This could be the first fall this round, I think, in the game. I don't think we've seen one yet. Bad Bunny going to go down for that kill. He's not going to be looking the right way, though. So, Zergus will shut that idea down. No fall this round here. I think Imperia will find a round here, though, for themselves. This took plenty of time, but the Capital with very limited intel and limited uh, gadgetry, I don't think he has the right tools in the kit to take care of for these men. But at the same time, it could happen. Smoke Babe going to burn more time, though, and Zergus just going to try and go up these white stairs. But I, I do want to give credit. At least they, they learned. They didn't let it happen a second time. If that happened a second time, I think I would have just quit. I, I would have just, I would have been done. You would have taken the outro right there. With, but that's, <laughs> that's not going to happen. I'm not going to leave you hanging. 45 seconds, though. Let me catch my breath for a second there. A little bit of acid reflux. God, I hate that hereditary trait. But 40 seconds on the clock, and every approach is just being denied pretty well by Imperia. Zerges is in a tight predicament. It's 4v1, 30 seconds on the clock. He really can't do anything here. If I were him, I would just have a tactical timeout and see what his team needs to work on for the next round. I don't even know if these players know what a tactical timeout means, but hey, he'll try to stat his KD up a little bit more, but that won't be the case. Eddie, right around the door with the Mossberg in hand, will shut him down, and Imperia take a comeback round win in desperation to try and stop this game from ending out. Now 6-4 to four match point, there's still that looming factor of the game ending in a singular round. Imperia has to play these next couple of rounds perfectly to get into overtime. Now, they are in defense, so they could very well do it. They still have that potential. But the problem is they just won upstairs. They win this downstairs. Great. That one round differential. But then they have to go to that third site, which is still pretty hard on this map, all things considered. So I am curious to see what they're going to throw at these attackers who have been very aggressive. We're going to see the Blackbeard come out, which is, uh, <laughs> you know... We have yeah. a lot to say about that ourselves, but we'll just leave oh, yeah. it unsaid at this point. I think everyone feels the same way about Blackbeard. We're going to see that six pick, though. I'm glad for it. They 
really desperately need that hard breach. So they're going to be bringing it. And I do think Thermite's actually probably the play. Uh, the ace, again, wasting two of his charges, and then he only has one left. He's going to make a smaller hole anyway. Might as well just bring that Thermite. And honestly, I, I do think it's relatively safe to do that on this map, especially getting a hatch. That's one of the easiest things. As long as they're aware of where the Romas are, he's going to be relatively safe. Yeah, Quack can get open the E-Box hatch if he wants to. He can also work his way around to get the farthest wall and elbow. I don't know if he's going to be able to do his job that effectively. There's a lot of anti-breach in the hands of Imperia, so it might just be an E-Box wall take instead. That's probably the best way to approach this, or as a matter of fact, not even bother heading that direction. The only problem is... If you're going to go in through Freezer, you need some type of ranged hard destruction because you will get punished immediately because there's normally someone playing in that back corner near Freezer to deny the wall from being opened up or stalling that Freezer side to push. So we're going to have to see a blue bunker take. That's exactly what General Electric is doing. And Eddie, he's playing far too aggressive on that smoke roll. He will get punished immediately by that Blackbeard shield. And Unfair punishes a completely different player of Bad Bunny. And I don't even know where he was positioned at. That looks to be up above near Big Tower, Wes. Yeah, it's unfortunate that the defenders who really need these rounds already lost a man, and that's going to be the Jaeger, one of the best guns in the game, and he's off the board. So now these last four defenders are going to have to hold out. Now, unfortunately for them, they did do a lot of damage. Zerg is going to kill himself with a grenade, so that's very unfortunate for these attackers. And I was going to mention unfair on low health. Now Breeze is on very low health as well, so these defenders are actually in a pretty good position because of that uh, self-kill. I'm speechless. Uh, 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 I mean, I'm guessing he assumed too. it was an ADS there. And <laughs> yeah, let's just cut off our own sight line, guys. Great, great, great job. Yep. All right. You might need to go on the drawing board with that trajectory for the uh, the smoke grenade. But hey, it's all right. It's not all right anymore, though. Not a sinner. We'll get another kill on the unfair this time. Breeze tries to finish off Eddie. He's left on a sliver of HP, but retreats back into the closet area. Sinner picking up a double kill for himself now. General Electric is just falling apart at the seams at this point. It's basically up to Quack because I doubt Breeze can find a kill with that BMR. It's a horrible gun unless he picks up one onto Eddie, perhaps. Nice flick by Quack. He runs right into sight and gets another frag against himself. Not a Sinner shuts him down. It's just a 1v3 now up to Breeze who's incredibly low on HP and is in the middle of Blue Bunker. He'll sit behind that deployable shield, lighting up not a sinner, but he's still alive and kicking. See, uh, okay, uh, oh. all right, and now Breeze wins the fight. I don't even want to talk about that. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, uh, un unnecessary aggression. You still have a minute to kill, too. So now it's a 1v2, but it doesn't matter. Ace will shut him down, so good job holding out that basement hold, and they're able to do so. We, we won't try and slam them any further. We've been pretty critical. It's, it's a fun game still. Uh, and in this case, though, that will let, the, let them go to that third site, as I would mentioned, though. So this is for all the marbles. It's 6-5 Imperia. I need to win this third site. Either or. We're either going to head to overtime or there will be a decided victory of General Electric. This is the most important round for both teams because that's going to set up the storyline as to how the rest of this plays out or not play out with one round left, either or. So this is going to be a very impactful one, to say the least. So both these teams are going to have to play at their best. I am really concerned about General Electric. They really seem out of their comfort zone because now Imperia is denying almost all of their aggression, even though General Electric has still been able to pick up those opening frags. It's towards the middle and end game where they make so many mistakes. It Attack doesn't make up for their previous just advantages against Imperia. So they've been actually doing much better now. They've been thinking about themselves a lot more, but I mean, they could still have a couple of tricks up their sleeves, possibly. Maybe meeting in kitchen will be a much different site. It is one of the more difficult sites to defend, but even then, if you extend up above, that wastes so much time, and then you can use those vertical sight lines above to try to counteract the attacking push, but the same goes for General Electric. If they clear out the roamers and do their own vertical play, they can find a lot of opportunities based off of that factor as well. I do like that they're bringing the Maestro. I think he's very underrated. I think some teams have actually moved away from him, which I think is a deficit. Not always. Of course, there are some, some maps that he doesn't play as well, but I think this is certainly a map where he has a very powerful arsenal. He can help make rotates. He has the Elda in hand, and those bulletproof cams, I do think a lot of teams have moved towards a smoke plant 
idea with the meta, uh, especially this map again. So he's very powerful. I do like that they're bringing him. The only concern I have is these castles. There's a sledge on the board, and there's always been a sledge on the board, so I just don't think it's going to do all that much good for you. This is the best objective room for sledge. Other than that, though, he's very lackluster, but I'm glad they're bringing him here because, like you mentioned, can break those castle barricades. A lot of vertical play happens when attacking either the dining room or meeting room, either or it's the exact same spiel. And we're seeing that drone or that roam clear with drones coming out against oh. Viper. And oh man, what a lovely cross peak by Unfair. He immediately gets off the angle that will allow him to keep the man advantage up and alive. He could rotate around, possibly find another because there is still one roamer up above. But other than that, great start for General Electric. They really want to seal the deal and actually take away this best of one victory without going to overtime. You know, there was something that happened there that I'm just going to be a little nitpicky on, but it's actually a huge deal. You have Kate on the board. You didn't use, use a mute there. The, the uh, upstairs and downstairs wall, which we're seeing getting opened up again here now, so both the attic and that lower meeting room wall is opened up. A Kate could have denied all four walls with one Kate. So to use that instead of a mute would have been a far better play. I would agree, most certainly. It's a lot more uh, wasteful. You can just kind of throw it at the wind and just kind of hope for the best. It's a much better idea than K tricking or something else, like you mentioned earlier. Zerges will pick up another as well into Eddie. A four on three. Bad Bunny in a last ditch attempt will try to refrag on out. Not finding another, though. Unfair will get a double kill for himself. A four on two. This could be the end of the match, Wes. There isn't really much else they can do, especially now. So as Breeze wraps around the corner up above in the stairwell and finds one, it's a one on three, all up to aces, and a quick trade from quack against the other site will end off this best of one seven to five We're not going to see overtime and general electric finally will end up picking up a round after so many losses due to their over aggression and extensions yeah i mean it was six three at one point right so they had lost two rounds in a row they really couldn't afford to lose that third and they didn't so they showed up when they needed to right you kind of expect the defense to win the upstairs and the downstairs to a certain degree at least and so they got the split that they needed they got the 4-2 split on their defense and then they were able to kind of split it whereas closer to a 3-3 on their attack so they got what they needed those defenders though of imperia credit to them they did fight back it just wasn't quite enough that third site is going to always be the weakness in the armor so unfortunately there just didn't do enough on their own attack and I think they really could have, because um, on the other side, not Imperia, but the other team, which I'm blanking on right now. General. John, help me. General Electric. Okay, thank you. Uh, they just didn't play hard breach a lot. So they really did leave a lot of openings that Imperia could have played off of, and they just weren't able to capitalize as much as they really probably should have. So a uh, good game to both teams, but there's certainly areas to improve. And I'm sure as the season progresses, they, they will improve. I think that's the best thing about T4 is that you see these teams at their worst and then over time they can progress, maybe make roster changes, go a little bit more in depth on VOD review, look at Pro League a lot more because I think that's the best way to actually improve is just basically copy off Pro League. I'm going to be blatantly honest, copy off Pro League and then just spice things up a little bit, kind of cater them more towards your team. That's what everyone does. No one just wants to admit to it. That's literally how it works. Just do that, and you'll already become a lot better, become a lot more confident with yourself, but I don't want to ramble on for 80 more years about how they get better. But again, hope you all enjoyed this best of one, me and Wailku commentating over it. And I think that's going to be it for us for AWG. I'm most certainly positive, right, Narwhals? You want to mute for a second? Yeah. No, you're right. That, All right. That's it. Okay. That's it for uh, for us for today. There will be another game, I believe, tomorrow, if I recall okay. it correctly, on Saturday. So uh, there's still be more to come, of course. And as the season progresses, even more. So I'm, I'm curious to see how these teams will play out. Obviously, it looked like it was more general attitude winning early, and then seven five is the end result. So it did end up being closer than maybe what we thought it'd be. So. I'm curious to see, will that be a theme throughout this league? Are these teams really all at that same tier? It'd be really cool if they were. Uh, it's never really fun, honestly, when there's just one front runner team just blows away a league. Um, so hopefully for the sake of competition, we do see similar results uh, throughout. But in any case, as you mentioned, a lot of growth to witness. Hopefully you all will be back with us to witness even further growth as the season progresses. That's it for us for tonight. And we appreciate you coming and watching. Please show up tomorrow as well. Come check it out. See how the other two teams will perform in the next game. Um, and have a great night.